Good morning, Internet. It's my birthday, so I'm going to talk about whatever I want to talk about. And I'm in a, I'm inside the car because I forgot my headphones, and thus I need a better microphone. Oh, well. Um, but I want to talk about Apple and Nintendo today. So there's a lot of talk about Nintendo being in trouble. Basically, Nintendo's problem right now is they lost the hardcore market to Sony and Microsoft. And rather than try and go after that market again, they said, you know what? Forget that. We're going to go after the mainstream. We're going to make games that anyone can enjoy. And they did it, and it was amazing. We got the Wii and the DS, and they were phenomenons. The problem with going after the mainstream is that you have to keep the mainstream, and it's a lot harder to keep the mainstream. Nintendo is losing the mainstream market to smartphones. iPhones, Androids, uh, Kindle Fires. People aren't buying uh, a $150 DS with $50 games. They're buying a $200 on-contract smartphone and getting free-to-play games. And so the Wii U and the 3DS haven't been selling as well as Nintendo wanted. People have said, you know, Nintendo should make iOS games. Well, why not take it one step further? Apple has a huge cash hoard. Why don't they just buy Nintendo? Apple needs games that are exclusive to iOS. iOS has to do a lot more to, to make people develop for it and just for it. Now, Apple's made some inroads with this, uh, with Sprite Kit uh, that's new in iOS 7, but it'd really be nice if they bought Nintendo and had a stable of games that were permanently iOS exclusive. And if nothing else about Nintendo, they make games that people want to play. I mean, people still play Super Mario Brothers from the 80s. So there's a couple problems with this. The problem that people usually get to is corporate culture. But I think, you know, under the right circumstances, those can be minimized. You know, desperation has a way of causing compromise where you thought compromise wasn't possible. That's not what I think the problem is. The problem that I'm seeing is online services. In iOS versus Android, Google has Google Docs, Gmail, uh, Google Drive, uh, a whole suite of online services that work together and play together and everything stays in sync and it works. Apple has iCloud just can't seem to shake the specter of mobile me. Developers still don't trust it, and you, and by extension, users don't trust it. On the Nintendo side, there's Xbox Live. But you have one central friends list, interactions and purchases, and they're all based around people. It's a very person-centric online service, and it works really well. And on the Nintendo side, it's all very device oriented. You have device-specific friend codes, 16 or 12-digit numbers, purchases that are tied to devices, so if you don't get your Wii or DSi repaired by Nintendo, you lose everything that you've downloaded on it. So knowing all this, do we really want to bring together the companies responsible for mobile me and friend codes? Because a merger is a huge time of transition, and companies are made up of people. And people, in times of transition, lean back on their comfort zones and stick to what they know. And companies do the same thing when they're in mergers. And right now, neither Apple or Nintendo really get online services. They need to be able to grow and mature in this area. And in the middle of a merger, that's not going to happen. They're going to sit back on what they know, and their online services are going to get worse. And all that really sucks because, at the end of the day, I just want to play Pokemon on my iPhone. First world problems, am I right? Thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.